he had just divorced his first wife, uh, Anne Cannon, the, the heiress of the, the largest towel manufacturer in the world. It was the height of the Great Depression. Beginning with the stock market crash worsened by the Dust Bowl, millions of Americans were unemployed. Nearly half of our country's banks had failed, but some families were depression-proof. Smith uh, certainly burned the candle of life at, at both ends. The Reynolds family in Winston-Salem was one of them. Both R.J. Reynolds and wife Catherine had died. Their youngest child, Zachary Smith Reynolds, or Smith, turned 20 years old on November 5th, 1931. He was quite an aviator and really accomplished, probably knew more about airplanes than anybody else his age in the country. Unlike a lot of 20-year-olds, Smith knew exactly what he wanted to do. Had a real mechanical, mechanical knowledge mixed with this kind of um, devil-may-care attitude and fearlessness, really. And with a $50,000 a year allowance, he had the means to do it. But he was right at the, at the epicenter of aviation at a time when it was becoming more commercially important. And the, the kind of Hollywood star appeal of, the, of these pilots was never higher. Smith left his first wife and their daughter behind. And during a trip to Maryland, met a singer of one of the time's most popular songs. Smith certainly fell completely head over heels for Libby Holman. Met her in Baltimore. The pair married on November 29th, 1931. It would last just over seven months. Came back to Ronaldo, uh June of 1932 and really just lived here for one month until his death. On July 5th, 1932, Smith and Libby were hosting a party. The most notorious day in the history of this house, in a way that it's the most famous day, but it's also its, its saddest day. Drinks were served, barbecue was had, as the night turned into early morning. Smith came back up to the house and couldn't find Libby for a time. And that's when Smith came across Ab Walker. Ab is Smith's childhood friend as well, and his secretary, kind of a a do-everything kind of gopher. The mystery of where Libby was was about to be solved, but another mystery was in the making. Libby is then seen uh, coming up from the lake, somewhat disheveled, um, grass stains, she'd been drinking clearly. The timeline was well documented, thanks to the estate's night watchman. It's pretty remarkable how precise um, the times are, though who was doing what and who was in which room come under a lot of contest and there's a lot of conflicting testimony. Those remaining on the property included Smith, Libby, and Ab. You know that a gunshot was heard at 1245. The shot had entered Smith's right temple near his hairline and went through his brain and came out below his left ear. Make suicide while still possible, quite unlikely. Smith was loaded in a car, which then sped into town. Surgery was performed by Dr. Fred Haynes of the Winston-Salem Haynes family and uh, he was pronounced dead around 4 a.m. that morning. His death was originally ruled a suicide. But a coroner's inquest uh, organized by the DA and held here in the house uh, resulted in a declaration that it was, it was death by person or persons unknown. A grand jury brought first-degree murder charges against both Libby and App. At a time that the um, first-degree murder would have carried the death penalty. The money-hungry American people became absorbed with the story. The hijinks of, you know, 19, 20-something-year-old children at a party with um, maybe too much means at their disposal and not enough adult supervision. Both Libby and Ab posted $25,000 bonds. Front page, coast-to-coast -coast news coverage of this story. But Will Reynolds, RJ's younger brother, penned a letter to the DA and the judge saying the family would be content were the case to be dropped. A very influential family and they made their intentions clear and indeed this first degree murder case was simply dropped. Libby left Renolda, but she wasn't alone. She was pregnant at the time of Smith's uh, death and Smith had just learned it that day so that that, that feeds into the conjecture as well um, in terms of a possible love triangle between these three young people. She named the boy Christopher. He died in 1950 at age 17 in a climbing accident. Libby lived until 1971 when she committed suicide. Part of her fame at this point is tied to the, the case and people's kind of uh, morbid curiosity about her, frankly.